I'm Hanine. Welcome to our home in Michigan. Let me show you around. Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles? Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. My name is Hanine Matt, and we are in Canton, Michigan. Our home was built in 2000. Uh, it's definitely a 2000 built cookie cutter kind of home and neighborhood. And we moved in in 2009. So we've been here for almost 15 years and we've spent almost 15 years trying to make it less cookie cutter and a little bit more like us. My design style, it's always a little tricky to answer uh, because I like too much, but I really just love a good juxtaposition. So I may love modern things, but I also love old stuff and bringing in pieces with history that tell a story. I like a space to feel curated over time. I love things that are rustic and more primitive, but I also love things that are a little more glam and maybe have a little bit of a sheen. I love color. I'm not afraid of mixing patterns. I love moody. Um, I love things that feel like a warm hug. Um, I kind of feel like after the pandemic, uh, I was very much more drawn to earth tones and things that felt cozy since we were in our home quite a bit. So there's a lot of dark moody colors around here, a lot of floral uh, mixed with plaid, and uh, every room has something vintage in it. And I love using old books. Um, I always kind of wanted our home to feel a little bit like a fairy tale story, but not in a fussy feminine way, um, just in like a like a storybook way. I love I love to read and I love books, so that's kind of mixed throughout the house, you'll see. Welcome into our entryway. Uh, one thing about this space is people are always asking what the wall color is and it's actually not paint. It's a faux suede wallpaper. It feels really soft to touch and it's so beautiful. It's just really like rich and chocolatey. Um, this is vintage uh, and it's all a matter of highs and lows, I feel like. So this wallpaper is a bit pricey, but this is a Target, this is a Target lamp. So it's a, good, it's a good balance. And then up here on the wall going up the stairs, these are all but one uh, is thrifted. Uh, the one with the birds is from Home Goods. Every now and then you can find a good Home Goods find. The floors are engineered hardwood, and I liked the warm color. It's like dark, but not too dark, so you don't see every little thing. Um, but you know, light wood is very in right now, and it's so beautiful. And every now and then I'm tempted to go in that direction, but I have to remind myself that's a little more coastal and my house is not coastal. We're in Michigan and the whole vibe of the house is very like moody library. So this is the way to go, dark floors. Like I was saying before, I love a good mix and I love that the edges of this table are a little worn and distressed, but then I paired it with this little brass dog that kind of reminds me of our dog and the little brass lamp. So it's a, it's a good mix of rustic and also something that has a little bit of a sheen to it. 
That is a light from the line of Brian Patrick Flynn, who's a friend of mine. This is his lighting line, and I just loved how big it is. It looks awesome at night from the street. There's a little hallway to the powder room over here, and I just wanted to point out uh, it's a little tight, but I will say I never have claimed to be a minimalist, and I tend to just stuff my house with things that make me happy. So. This table is so beautiful. And this lady here, I uh, found her at an antique fair last summer. And she has a scarf over her head. She reminded me of a city, which is uh, the Arabic word for grandma. And I do have relatives who wear, you know, a hijab like this. So it, it made me happy. It kind of cracks me up because you could see her name is Olga. So I know she's not an Arab lady, but I like to think that she is. <laughs> so that's about it for this little little nook. So this right here is a little gem of a powder room. This was inspired by uh, just all the little boutique hotels that we've visited in our travels. I kind of wanted it to feel like a bathroom that you would see in a hotel or in a really fancy restaurant. Um, I custom did this paint color. It's like a mix of two different blues. I did it in high gloss because I wanted it super dramatic. Um, there's portraits all throughout the bathroom and some people think it's weird. I think it's hilarious. I This is Janet Hill art. They're all super fancy. I love the clothes that they're wearing. This guy reminds me of Jude Law. <laughs> um, and this wallpaper, it just kind of had Parisian vibes. And I went on a trip to Paris in college and uh, I don't know, I just kind of felt like all of these people are going to a fancy party in one of these buildings. I, I like to put stories to each of my rooms sometimes. <laughs> so again, it's all about mixing patterns. So I really love, um, there's a floral Roman shade with this uh, kind of architectural wallpaper. And I thought that that was really cool. I love this more traditional faucet with the modern light and the egg shaped mirror. It's, it's pretty cool in here. My favorite thing about our home is that it tells our story. There's uh, little bits in each room that mean something to us. Not just a photograph, it could be a photograph or it could be like in this cabinet behind me, there's rocks in a bowl from my childhood backyard or records that I stole from my in-laws or, you know, things that we've picked up in our travels. Travel greatly influences what I do and I just love thinking of really special special memories when being in my home. So I think the best thing about our house is that it feels like ours. I'm gonna show you to our living room. So you can come this way. Welcome into our formal living room. Uh, this is one of my favorite places in the whole house because it really has a lot of our treasures in here. Um, first of all, again, with the books, uh, this is an old antique set that I found and I just thought it would look really cool under this cloche. This wall treatment, I believe these arches are meant to go, they're prefabricated. I just got them from Home Depot and I believe they're supposed to go over doorways or over windows. And we did this over the pandemic. This was like our I'm bored project. So my husband helped me to install this. I just wanted something unique. so. We did this and we painted the whole room black and I'm able to get away with it because this is the brightest room in the house. It has so much sunlight. Uh, more recently, we added these beams that I stained that's darker wood color to match the floors. And then this is what I like to call our Harry Potter light. So many people say it's Harry Potter vibes and that brings me so much joy because I love Harry Potter. Um, it's just very cozy in here. This cabinet is filled with so many treasures. As far as making your home your own, this is what I'm talking about. There's some things in here um, that just make me happy. This little bowl is filled with rocks from our childhood backyard. These are records from my in-laws. Um, this car, you may very well think it's meant for like a child's room, but when I saw it, it just, I kind of thought it was like an ode to my husband's automotive career. He's worked in the automotive industry for over 25 years. So I just liked that it was wood. I liked the look of it and I liked that it had a little meaning to it as well. These are some of my kids. Uh, 
in the office where we have the book covers on the ceiling, a lot of people were mad when I tore out the pages, but nothing got thrown away. I actually used them throughout the house decoratively as like a backdrop in some cabinets. So these are all of the interior pages to <clears throat> those book covers. This is a poetry book from a class I took in college. Um, and my husband, when we were dating, he wrote me a little note on one of the pages. I went to the University of Toledo and one of my art history professors actually published this little book. And I'm, I'm in the acknowledgements because um, he kind of gave credit to people that were in the class because we did a lot of research for him for this book. So this is just a little keepsake. This is a vintage trunk. As far as all of this pot pottery goes, I just want to say that when you have a collection of things, it could look very um, cluttered if it's spread out throughout the house or throughout a room, but if you put them together like this, I think it makes a much better statement and it's just so beautiful and collected all up there. Everyone loves the pottery up there. As far as this goes, um, again, with the book backdrop, uh, this little guy, I found him from an online antique dealer and I thought it was really cool and then it arrived and I kind of thought it looked a little spooky. Um, <laughs> kind of reminds me of like Halloween time. I feel like I should use it for Halloween decor, probably because it's the color of skin so it looks like a real hand, but that's okay. I don't mind creepy. I think it kind of, um, I think every home should have a little bit of a sense of humor. So I'm okay with creepy now and then. This is my husband and I in Napa. Um, this is a vintage chess set. This painting back here is actually this room and a follower actually painted that for me and sent it to me, which I thought was amazing. Very cool. Uh, this I just got recently. This is, I did some research and apparently it's a old carriage lamp, which I find fascinating. Uh, I love equestrian stuff. I love, uh, you know, horse horses, and if this was from a horse-drawn carriage, I would just be thrilled. I don't know 100%, but you can see on the back where it's screwed on. I don't know if it's to a vehicle or to an actual carriage, but anyway, it does actually light up and plug in, but I didn't want to deal with the cord at this time, so I actually just have candles lit inside. I just think it's so beautiful, and it looks really good against the black walls. Um, this is a lectern. I believe it's meant maybe for music sheets. I like using things in unconventional ways and I also really love uh, displaying books in all sorts of ways. So I just basically opened up this book to a page I thought was beautiful and now it's on display. This is a William Morris plaid. These are custom made drapes. I thought the color was gorgeous. And these are actually new chairs. These are from McGee & Co. And I just thought the arm was so beautiful. It has such a beautiful silhouette, a gorgeous profile when you look into the room and that's the shape of the chair that you see. We have yet another bust in the house. My kids may laugh at me because it's a lot of just weird people. <laughs> but again, it reminds me of a museum and that makes me happy. And I feel like it's, again, it's all about balance. So this may seem fussy, but I have it on this rustic table that I've had for years. Um, and it's also, like I said, all about high and low. This is actually a really inexpensive find. I found him for under 50 bucks. Uh, but this coffee table book is so beautiful and it's like four times the cost of this guy. <laughs> but so worth it. It's a book about um, libraries around the world. Um, and I just love when we travel. I love to find bookstores to go to or libraries to visit. And I had just read The Personal Librarian. And in September, I was in New York City for an event with Better Homes and Gardens. So I visited the library that that book was about and that's in this coffee table book. So that makes me happy. This is a Jake Arnold rug from Lulu in Georgia. It's one of the most comfortable rugs in the house. I love the copper color of it. Um, and then this little gallery wall, again, I'm not a minimalist and I love taking advantage of small nooks and crannies in the house and that includes skinny walls. And it also means not necessarily hanging art at eye level. I thought um, I would take the chance and just fill this from Florida, pretty much ceiling. Um, this I found in an estate sale. This is thrifted. This is Lulu in Georgia and it reminded me of our trip to Italy. And this is by a local artist. I found it at the Ann Arbor Art Fair and I'm kicking myself because I can't remember his name. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I want to give him a shout out. Um, but 
Yeah. Oh, and this is like a little thrifted needlepoint stool. Um, and again, in regards to balance, this looks kind of um, old school, right? And I love that this table is super modern. It's triangular in shape. It's like a red marble. It's really, it's something special. When we first looked at the house, um, I mean, this was like 15 years ago and I have always been a visual person and it's always been easy for me to visualize things that I want. Uh, I will also say that I was a mom of four kids. So at the time, I wasn't necessarily thinking about ways to decorate. When I first got to college, I was really interested in drawing and painting and I was really interested in fashion um, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do so I then started leaning into photography that was actually my concentration and I thought oh I'm gonna work for a fashion magazine you know you have these big grand dreams uh, when you're 18 20 so we got married we moved into well, this is actually our second home but we started having kids and my love of fashion very quickly turned into a love of interior design uh, because I stayed home raising my kids and I thought if I'm gonna be home with my kids, I better love what I'm looking at. So moving into this house and being home raising my kids, it was like, I, I realized very quickly that designing a space can make you feel something when you walk into it. And I loved making spaces feel good to me because I was home with my kids and I wanted it to be a livable, comfortable, beautiful space for my kids. So um, I think it just came with time, I guess. Now I'm going to take you into our dining room. This room is super cozy. Um, okay, where can I start? This lady, her name is Sophia. I was really drawn to her, just subtle touches of olive. Uh, I thought it looked beautiful with the wallpaper and the walls. This is Mediterranean olive. It's a Benjamin Moore color. Um, some people think she looks a little solemn, but I, I like that. I feel like she's kind of looking over us. <laughs> Such a weird thing to say, but I, uh, I like her and I like, sometimes I would suggest that you leave your art just kind of leaning on the floor. Uh, for me, one excuse was that I just haven't gotten around to finding the perfect spot yet, but honestly, I find that art leaning against the wall on the floor just lends itself to feeling a little more casual and a little less stuffy. So we have an old family portrait. We have um, some antique uh, pieces that we found in Italy, and these are just some other pieces of art uh, that I've collected over time. I do find that I like a good mix of chairs around the dining room. So we have some upholstered armchairs and then we also have these leather ones. And then of course I love throwing on a plaid throw over the back. Uh, as every room in my house, I'm really drawn to modern lighting. I think when things get to feel too antiquey, antiquey, it's good to kind of throw in some really modern elements. I think this light is so cool. This is a rattan light from our house. Um, and I think it just kind of balances the space just right. Uh, this bowl is ginormous and very heavy. And I currently just have it filled with um, an old encyclopedia set. I just thought the gold paper, the gold lining was really beautiful. Um, so that's that. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I painted the ceiling black. This is the same color as this room over here. So I like to have things connected. There's a lot of olives, blacks, browns, and a little bit of um, maybe some like rust cinnamony colors. So this is Jet Black by Benjamin Moore. Same color as in there. And I just kind of wanted this room to kind of feel um, like it's closing in on you in a really good way. <laughs> like a little bit of a hug. Um, this wallpaper has a little bit of a sheen to it, which is really beautiful. And I like that it's leafy, but there's also, I don't know if you could see, there's also little um, keys, which I thought was pretty cool. So this is um, a really oversized mirror and I love the placement of it across from the window. It really reflects a lot of light, uh, which um, is always great. 
and I was gonna show you this piece. This was a $50 thrifted find. It's super heavy uh, and I painted it the same color as the walls so that it just kind of continues and blends right in. And then again with the books, I like using them in different ways throughout the house. In this case, uh, it was to raise the lamps up a little bit. And <clears throat> I don't know, these are just little random little random little thrifted finds. He's got a pipe in his mouth, kind of reminded me of my uncle. Um, this is another way, when I talked about adding modern lighting to rooms that are feeling a little stuffy, this is another way to do that is to add really contemporary art. So I loved this black abstract. Um, I found it to be really stark and handsome next to more of a feminine kind of wallpaper. Um, but it, I mean, it doesn't last long. Then of course I throw in this like Victorian lady and this random mirror. <laughs> so it starts getting fussy all over again, but that's okay. I, I, I like a good, I like a good mix. That's, that's the theme. Um, and then also this over here, this is my dad's old army trunk. And I just thought it looked really cool in here. I love a good black and gold combo. Well, as far as hosting goes, we do really love to have people over. Uh, I think for the dining room, uh, we're one of those people where we do use it on fancier occasions, like we hosted Thanksgiving this year and we had this gorgeous floral arrangement from Floor Detroit and the table settings, I definitely went all out. Or even the other day, my daughter had some friends over for a Galentine's and this had a red tablecloth over it with like all the Valentine's Day type of shebangs. But at the same time, Really, it's for everyday use. We don't eat here, but we use it all the time for puzzles, for Lego sets, for all the things kid related. Um, you don't see a lot of toys around here, but my youngest is 10. So really, most of my kids are older and it's not, um, you know, it's not, we're not in the toys scattered around the house phase, but we are still in the use the dining room for all things kid related phase, which I love. I do want to point out in regards to the rug that it's just a simple check pattern and I love mixing florals with more of a geometric. So with the wallpaper being more of a floral, I loved a good geometric check on the floor. So it's a good, it's a good balance. I've always loved florals and plaids. It's like the masculine and feminine uh, way to mix things around here. So next up, I'm going to take you to our kitchen. As far as renovations go, our kitchen was a big one. That was definitely, it screamed 2000. It had the dark cherry cabinets and the black granite. Basically, even though I love dark moody colors, I've always wanted kind of a lighter, brighter kitchen. So uh, we replaced the counters. We put in quartz and a waterfall island. Um, we painted the lower cabinets tricorn black by Sherwin-Williams and the uppers Simply White by Benjamin Moore. We added beams just to give it a little bit of charm and a little bit of character. Um, and then we put all new floors throughout the house, hardwood floors um, and a new backsplash. And also we moved the microwave from the typical builder grade above the stove location and we put in a range hood. So welcome into our kitchen. This was the space that had the dark cherry cabinets and the black granite back in the day. And we kept the bones of the kitchen and we really just repainted the cabinetry and got new countertops and this waterfall island and this sink and faucet and the backsplash and the lighting and all that jazz. We added in the uh, beams a little bit later. I just think beams add so much character. Um, Again, with the books, I will say this, if we were doing it from scratch, obviously we would take the cabinets to the ceiling. But because we were trying to save money and we did not, um, you know, gut the whole thing and start from scratch, I thought, you know, back in the day, people could put tchotchkes on top of their cabinets. I wasn't gonna do that, obviously. So I think books are lovely. They're charming. People talk about it getting dusty. I mean, who cares? How often are you going up there? Am I grabbing those books to read? No, <laughs> but that's okay. They look nice, they're charming, and they add a little bit of character and they take up some space over the cabinet. So it's just a way of um, dealing with a 
thing that you don't necessarily love about your kitchen. Again, with another lady, I thought she was really pretty. I found her at a, a vintage shop in Grand Rapids, Michigan, along with this painting, um, this little grinder thing I stole from my mom. I tend to go to my parents or my in-laws and take things. Um, this is vintage. Everyone thinks it's crazy to put something over the stove. I will say, first of all, I'm not a big cook, uh, but also it's not really, I don't know. It's just been fine. <laughs> I just was gonna show you this um, frame. It's got this like rustic, rusty orange color velvet. And that's a picture of us from Italy. Um, and then also I was just gonna share uh, to not necessarily always frame the photos that are picture perfect and posed. This is a selfie that we took on my daughter's high school graduation day. And uh, my husband's face is half cut off and so is my son's, but I just remember being so happy that day. So it's framed and by the sink. This is an oversized light fixture. I love that it's modern and more of a charming traditional kitchen. And I love these dome lights. I will say, I will never ever have lights that match anywhere in our home. Um, there were dome lights that I loved for over the table, but because I picked out dome lights for the island, I wanted something different for over the table. So nothing matches in our house. That's like my only rule. And I don't like rules. I really don't follow any rules, but this is, that's why it's a rule because I don't want it to match. Um, these, again, I love a good check or plaid, and I thought it was really fun mixed with this diamond uh, check flooring or rug. Our dog bowl is made out of the same material as our countertops, and they made it to match the uh, waterfall island, which I thought was kind of cute. And then over here, so this is the open shelving. Uh, at Christmas time, I had these filled with uh, like metal gingerbread houses. Uh, it was super cute and I, I that was the last thing I removed um, because it worked throughout the winter. I kept it for a long time. But so now we're back to just decorative items. Again, this is us in Venice. Um, all browns, oranges. This wallpaper is really beautiful. Um, I have a theme of like trees. I feel like there's a lot of trees or like leafy things in our home. Um, again, it just makes me think of a storybook. This is uh, just vintage glassware that I thrifted. I loved the color of it. It's a really pretty amber glass. Um, and again, because these are more rustic shelves, I like having some shiny things here and there. Um, this is a book. We went into the most charming bookstore in Florence and I just thought this was so beautiful. I just love that scene and it's from 18 something. I can't remember, but it's way old and it's super beautiful and I, it just brings back happy memories. So this plate, uh, I thrifted this and it said Burns Cottage. I believe it's in Scotland. This is the birthplace of the guy who wrote the Auld Lang Syne song for New Year's Eve. Um, that's, that's his house. I thought that was really cool. And it's a pretty olive color. So anything that's olive, I'll take. I like green. So this is our powder, another powder room on the first floor. We had leftover beams. So I had our contractor add beams and uh, this light does not work. I really just added it for decorative purposes. I was really inspired after our trip to Europe. So I wanted it to kind of have a European feel. Um, these are just equestrian prints I found on Etsy. I always frame art most of the time without the glass just so that there's no reflection. Um, and I just thought these were so beautiful. We went horseback riding in Florence, so horses remind me of that. This is an interesting little tidbit. So this is a shadow box with this thrifted used paintbrush. Um, nothing too symbolic other than the fact that it was kind of like an ode to my art degree. I thought that was kind of cool. I think with having four kids and a dog especially, uh, it can be tricky keeping a place well maintained and you want it to be 
you know, pristine and beautiful, but you also want your kids to feel like they can sit and actually live in their homes, um, in their homes. So I would say, th- I would say, uh, well, first of all, I think it helps that my kids are older now. <laughs> it didn't always look like this when they were younger, uh, but I think that it's doable no matter what age. Obviously, you need. Uh, things that are a little more kid friendly. Um, very comfortable fabrics, practical fabrics. Um, our sectional is Krypton, it's essentially indestructible. Um, but also, I'm not afraid of things getting messed up. I feel like that kind of adds to the charm. Like our dining room is showing wear and tear, but with every spill or um, what are those things? those iron-on beads that the kids do. (laughs) They've left some residue and it's just, you know, I look at it and I smile, I think of the memory of that. So off of our breakfast nook is, this sliding door leads to our back porch, which I'll take you to. I actually just painted this window black. So now we are on our back patio we use this for entertaining. Uh, the kids have, we've had a luau birthday back party back here. We've carved pumpkins out here for a Halloween party. And uh, just anytime we have a get together, we always end up out here. I like the, the uh, string lights. And again, there's some thrifted art and some comfy pillows. And we love having a screened in porch because we back to woods. So in the summer, we just have a lot of bugs. Uh, so this is a really nice place to be outside and get some fresh air without being all the way outside and we just love entertaining out here. It's nice to just sit around, have a drink, have some food and um, just have fun with family and friends. So the amount of time we get to spend out here is a little limited based on being in Michigan. We have really long tours and even the spring it takes a while to get um, get nice and warm out here, but we do enjoy it to the fullest in the summer months and also the fall. Honestly, the fall is my favorite. All of these trees get super colorful, so I love being out here in the fall time. Okay, so it's a little chilly, so we're gonna go inside and I'll show you our family room. So now we are into the family room just off of the kitchen. Uh, This is the place that we spend the most time, the place we watch TV and hang out. Here's a nice gallery wall of my fam. Uh, And I love this fluted lamp shade. That's really beautiful. Uh, This is a super large and super comfortable sectional. This is from Universal Furniture. It's really modern in shape. It has a really wide back and it's made that way so that people can actually like sit on the back of the couch too. We had people over for the Super Bowl and there was a ton of people also on the back of the couch watching the screen. Um, I do like pairing it though with this antique quilt on the back. Um, I washed it (laughs) after I got it. I for sure washed it because it's so old but it's so beautiful. I love the colors in it and I love that it's velvet. So I think it just warms up the space especially since the shape of the sectional is uh, so modern. This is the Hattie console from our house. I love the arch shapes. I will say arches are such a trend right now uh, and it works for us and our house because homes built in the 2000s use a lot of arches. So there's a big arch window over our front door. So I kind of added arches throughout the house as well. This being one place. I have a thing for pairs. I found this digital art on Etsy and loaded it onto the TV to look like art on the wall. And then these little guys are from a local shop called Haven in downtown Plymouth. I actually got them for Christmas time, but I think they look good all year long. So I have them in a little bowl right here. And then this is a vintage print of a spot in Rome that we just visited. So that's why that's in there. On this side of the room, we have, again, with the play on the arches, I found these gorgeous arch bookcases. Love filling it with treasures. Um, This is a random, I like finding little dollhouse furniture (laughs) and putting it under cloches. I feel like every room needs a little touch of whimsy, a little touch of humor. So there's, uh, there's that. And then this fireplace, uh, this, I'm not a huge fan of corner fireplaces, but we are working with what we've got. I tried to make it make sense by, we painted it the tricorn black, 
And then we found these um, wood slats that come in sheets. So we also had this black also, so it like reads as one large black wall. Um, again, I'm not a huge fan of accent walls, but I feel like I was just making do with what I had. Ideally, I would love to move this fireplace to the center of the room. Um, and then it would be a double fireplace with the office on the other side, which would be amazing. Um, I do want to talk to you about this Fireplace screen. I found this in Nashville at an antique store. It's a tapestry. It's amazing. I love the wood detail. And the funny thing about this was we were going to Nashville for a friend's birthday and our flight was canceled because the snow in Michigan was crazy that morning. And we ended up driving. And if we didn't end up driving, I would not have been able to bring this home. <laughs> so that kind of worked out in my favor. And I think, oh, and then also, I just recently put these battery operated sconces up and I ordered uh, brown plaid shades for them. They're just not in yet, but that'll be way more charming than just a solid white shade. We do not know this man. Uh, I bought him around Christmas time and he kind of reminded me of Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, but again, it's just one of those things that uh, works all year round. It's an original. I found him at a, a vintage shop and I thought the colors were beautiful. The frame was really nice and the browns and the yellows, I tend to be drawn to fall colors. So he works. Santa Claus all year round. <laughs> I feel like the way to make a builder grade home a little more your own, first of all, I feel like color goes a long way. People are afraid of paint and wallpaper for some reason. Um, I hate when people talk about resale value. <laughs> You're living in your home, whether it's for a month or 10 years, make it the way you want. And who cares what the future homeowners <laughs> are gonna think about it. So uh, we used a lot of paint, we used wallpaper, um, even a lot of architectural interests like adding beams or moldings, um, or also I just feel like adding history to any room is gonna make it feel very curated and collected. Um, I have an art degree and the college that I went to was the University of Toledo. It's about an hour south. And the art classes were attached to the Toledo Museum of Art. So I had immediate access to this museum all the time. And it was like my happy place. So for me, I feel like some people may walk in and think our house kind of looks like a museum. I have a lot of statues and a lot of art everywhere. Um, but for me, I feel like it's all about balance and having a home that looks like a museum does feel like home to me. And if you balance it with less fussy things, it feels really livable and just like a beautiful work of art that you live in. The way that I would say that we keep this very open floor plan uh, flowing uh, so that each room looks good together, but is also its own separate entity, its own personality. I feel like every room in a house is a different chapter of the same book. So even though they look different, they should all speak to each other, if that makes sense. So my best advice would be uh, to use a certain color palette. Um, so I'm not saying paint everything the same color. I'm not a big fan of just an all white house or an all whatever house, but colors that look good together. Um, so for me, I'm really drawn to autumnal colors. My oldest daughter's name is Autumn because I love Autumn so much. Um, but browns, rusty oranges, olive greens, um, blacks, all of that kind of looks good together. So I kind of thread these colors throughout all the rooms so that even though it's open, um, everything kind of looks good together. And also I think it's important to add little transitions that um, warm up the space. Like this is a random little corbel. I actually found this on Target online and I loved the rusticity of it and the color was beautiful. And it's just a little, little spot for, um, you know, transitioning from the kitchen to the family room. So we're currently in the family room and right around the corner is our home office if you'd like to take a look. 
this is our home office. Uh, which you can imagine over the pandemic we used quite a bit and still do just to lounge in. Uh, it's such a special room. I love this brown plaid wallpaper. This is from Thibaut. Uh, and if you draw your attention to the ceiling, uh, this room, uh, the ceiling is covered with uh, vintage black books that I scoured the area for. I had a ton just because I've always collected black books and I thought I had plenty for the ceiling and once I got started I realized I definitely do not have enough so I looked at um, just a bunch of Salvation Armies and thrift stores and uh, I just I tore out the inner pages uh, but nothing got thrown away. I've used it throughout the house, the inside pages, uh, but the ceiling I used command strips uh, because the covers themselves are super lightweight, so it's not going anywhere. Um, and it's really cool. It's layered. Um, it just brings a fun texture to the space. I don't even know how it came to my head, to be honest with you. I just, I love decorating with books and I love reading. And I thought, oh, you're looking for something fun to do. Why don't you cover the ceiling with book covers? I, I don't know. My brain is a little weird sometimes. <laughs> So uh, that's that's where it went. I had no reference photo. I just kind of went with it. Initially, I was using a nail gun to see if I needed to nail them in. And people thought I was nuts because I was just going to put a million holes in my wall. Again, I'm not afraid to put holes in my wall. So that wasn't a big deal, but it just wasn't um, working the best. And so I kind of toyed around with different things and the command strips ended up being the best bet. So it's pretty cool. I would just say one thing I should have done first was paint the ceiling black so that there, if there are any little crevices where you could see through, you wouldn't be seeing a white ceiling. You'd just be seeing the black paint and it would all mix through. So that's my, my only regret. Otherwise, no regrets. I love it. Well, the gallery wall, um, if you haven't noticed, I just really love a moody vibe, right? So clouds, rainy days, um, it's a mood, right? So I found all of these prints online. This is from Minted and you can customize the colors because it actually came really, it's a vibrant piece with bright purple sky and a bright lime green um, grass. So I just, I emailed the artist and said, this is the color of my couch. I want the grass more of an olive and the sky more of a dark brown and they customized it and it looks amazing and you know the best place to read and the best time to read is on a rainy day so I just felt like this really set the tone for just a good place to pick up a book. This is another you know ode to a bust and these are um, antique furniture books um, that I found in Ann Arbor so love those, love her. Um, Oh, this light, again, with a really modern light in a more traditional space. This light is from Anthropology. I just, I love the shape of it. I thought it was really cool. Um, and then my son takes his piano lessons here, uh, and I found this photograph from the Ann Arbor Art Fair last summer. Uh, so that is here. And then also this, this really cool modern lamp. I like it. Again, because it's modern, I just really like modern lighting. I tend to be drawn to really traditional, old school things, but when it comes to lights, I like them really, really cool. This room was really inspired by uh, Ralph Lauren's menwear line. <laughs> like I said, back in the day, I was really into fashion, and this is Ralph Lauren's, um, Ralph Lauren's book. And again, I love displaying books in unique ways, and so I just opened it up to a page that had some really fabulous, um, some really fabulous women's wear, but there's also like men's wear in here. And every now and then I just switch which page it's on. Uh, but yeah, and then there's a little little brass hand bookmark. We really just use this cabinet for the TV, but I do love that um, we have a Lions Lego helmet set because we love our lions in this house and they should have gone to the Super Bowl. And then also a family photo. And this little guy I found on Etsy, it's a little cloud. And I thought it looked cool with the cloud paintings. Right, isn't that fun? That's that. Oh, and this, I just wanna also say, this is a hand-blown Mark Wegar vase. My husband and I split the cost of this when we were dating in college from the Ann Arbor Art Fair. Um, 
I just think it's so cute to remember because we were dating and we were college students, so clearly we weren't like rolling in the dough, but he knew it meant a lot to me, so we split it. And uh, it has lasted through four kids and almost 25 years. I'm like waiting, I'm waiting for something bad to happen to it, but it's been good, it's, we're, we're good. So that's, that's all that's in there. I would love to show you the rest of the house, so let's head upstairs. So now we are in the laundry room and the whole goal with this was to completely color drench it in yellow. It was a bit of a risk, but I've always wanted to do this. Um, in college, there was an artist, Sandy Skoglin, who came to the Toledo Museum of Art and she was a mixed media installation artist who did these incredible rooms that were all one color. Uh, and then she'd have these crazy things going on in it. Um, but the whole idea was that the rooms were drenched in all one color and I always was kind of fascinated by that. So we did the floral wallpaper and again, I mixed it with more of a geometric, like a stripe on the ceiling. I love finding ways to do something to the ceiling. So I thought this um, wallpaper was great with the floral. And then we changed the countertops. Um, this is a Farrell and Ball color, and I forget the name of it. <laughs> uh, these are M-Tech M -Tech hardware. Uh, my husband built this uh, shelf to go over um, the washer and dryer, which has been amazing. And then little tip for you, um, you can cover outlets, you know, <laughs> cover outlets with a piece of art. I bought this from somebody outside of a museum in Florence. And then also a little tip for you. This is a thrifted pot and I keep the, um, you know, the draft pellets in there for the laundry. <laughs> it smells so good. And then also I have the dryer sheets in this little wicker basket. So just find ways um, to make functionality more beautiful. You don't have to have a bright orange tied container sitting out or, you know, the bounce dryer sheets. You can put it in really pretty containers and then it looks um, really lovely. And then on this side, I just used museum putty to adhere this art uh, to the wall. I love this little pop of olive green in here. This is a velvet mat. And if you can see, she's carrying a basket of laundry over her head. So um, I actually found that art prior to even doing the laundry room. So I was so excited that it just, it works. It works in here. So I stole this from my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law. They had this in their basement and I just repainted it the same color as the rest of the room. And then I had this woman, it's a digital print I got online and her yellow dress just looked so beautiful in here. So it, it, it works in here. So this is our primary bedroom. Uh, it's a really lovely space with uh, tall vaulted ceilings, which I love. Um, it drives some people crazy that the bed isn't centered under the vaulted ceiling, but what they often don't see online is that that's because there's a door right here that leads to the bathroom. So didn't really have a choice there, but worked with what we had, did two mirrors on either side over the nightstands. Um, I love these pillows with the horses on them. Um, that's a thrifted piece of art. And a little way to add some character over here, we had a mural installed, uh, which I really love. And then this piece, I just, I love the distress of it all and it's really beautiful. And all, again, all of the book covers that are on the ceiling in the office, these are the interior pages. Um, I use it as backdrop in cabinets. So it works, um, and that's pretty much that. One thing about the canopy bed, with it being really a modern and sleek frame, with it being brass and the velvet headboard, I ended up going with a more traditional ceiling fixture, which typically I tend to go more modern with my lighting, but because the bed was super modern, I, I went a different route. Um, same thing with the lamps. Uh, the bases I found online at Home Depot, but I actually found the shades from Ballard Design. I thought the texture was really warm and inviting and it kind of reminded me of like a European cottage. Um, 
and I always like to feel, if I'm not traveling, I like to feel like I'm traveling somewhere else. So uh, just to have it feel like a far off place was really cool to me, so. And then the mirrors, again, with the arches, I like to bring in arches where I can so that the architecture of the house makes sense. So now I'm gonna take you into our primary bathroom. Okay, so let's talk about the primary bathroom for a minute. This is the room I was telling you that was in some publications and that's always really exciting. I'm really proud of it because we really took it all the way down and rebuilt it. And by we, I mean our contractor, but I came up with the design. <laughs> so for starters, uh, this wall back here was actually inspired by a 19th century wall molding that I saw um, on eBay. And I almost actually bought the wall molding that I found um, and had it delivered. And then my contractor said he can recreate it, which would be way easier. <laughs> so what we did was I came up with the idea of using corbels facing each other to create the arch. He just ended up having to kind of um, extend it a little bit so it didn't come to a point. It ended up being more of an archway. And then he added a little bit of a lip so that I can have candles or artwork. I found this tapestry on eBay and it really reminded me of um, that scene in Beauty and the Beast where she's twirling around reading and singing. <laughs> um, I just, I love it. Again, with the bust guy. This book, it's called The Ultimate Bath. It's from Barbara Salick who owns um, Waterworks and our bathroom is actually in this book. It's at the table of contents which is pretty awesome. This pedestal is vintage, found it on eBay. I loved that it was Lucite. I just thought it was really funky and cool and a good juxtaposition with a more classic bust. Um, and then this clawfoot tub is so fabulous. It's a dreamy tub. Um, when this was featured in Better Homes and Gardens, the writer said that this space was like a living room, but instead of a sofa, it had a fabulous clawfoot tub, which I just, I loved that. It does feel like a living space, um, but with a, a clawfoot tub in it. And I really thought this light was pretty cool. That's from Shades of Light. One thing that we did was there was a door here to the water closet uh, and we took it out and did a sliding door instead because uh, it just saved space. And then I painted this and the closet the same color. This is Palm Leaf by Sherwin-Williams. And then what I love is there's a little surprise of the wallpaper in here because I kept it very simple and classic with just white. But in here, I wanted it to be a little bit of a little jewel box. And again, because it's um, like handwritten script, it almost looks like a diary or a storybook in keeping with the theme of um, kind of like each room feeling like a storybook. So that's this. Um, even this, the ladder, uh, even that has an arch shape. I wanted it to speak to the arches on the wall. These are 19th century doors I found on eBay. There were two doorknobs. I promise it, um, there's a reason why we had to take it off. It's a long story, but um, <laughs> we put it on uh, a slider here and then this leads to our closet. I just thought these were so cool. Again, the arch um, was really cool. Uh, it was actually a blue door and we had it uh, stripped and then I painted it the same color as the water closet door. Um, but again, something old paired with something really new and beautiful like these uh, knobs I thought was really special. And then um, again, a little arch in that artwork and more statues. These are custom Roman shades. Um, again, a little play on a Czech kind of pattern with more of a floral type of traditional rug. I just was gonna say, we also added the same beams that we put in our kitchen, we added up here. Um, it matches the flooring that we put in here, which is a tile that looks like wood. Um, I love wood with black, so I just, I liked that combo. This is a vintage ashtray that I cleared off and I use it to hold Q-tips. 
So I just like using things in unconventional ways. And this came from France. I ordered this off of eBay. I just thought the colors were gorgeous. I would say our biggest renovation was our primary bathroom. The kitchen was something where it was just kind of cosmetic changes, whereas the bathroom, we gutted it and took it to the studs. Um, not ourselves. <laughs> we're not exactly DIYers. Uh, but we took it to the studs and the bathroom had a corner tub and you know, the shell lights <laughs> from the late 90s early 2000s. Uh, so we got a clawfoot tub and two vanities on the other wall and I'm really proud of that space. That space has been in Better Homes and Gardens, it's been online on Architectural Digest, it's been in a coffee table book uh, and it's just super special. I think the thing that makes a home come alive is things with history and things that tell your story. So I love going thrifting. I love special pieces that aren't necessarily in everyone's home that you can't get at Target. It's not old. <laughs> so I wanna bring history in so that it feels like it's been here for a while. So I just think older pieces, especially books. I just love filling a space with books and I use them in all sorts of ways, whether it's under lamps to elevate them or I have DIY'd a, a ceiling in our office of all book covers on the ceiling, which many people thought I was a little crazy for, but I think it's beautiful and it's great to read in there on a rainy day. I just, I love the vibe in there. So basically bringing in history and making sure your home tells your story is what gives it soul. Home to me is a place where you feel safe and loved and you're with your favorite people and it's just where you come home at the end of the day and feel your best and your most supported and where you have fun and you laugh a lot that's home thanks for watching go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides